So hello, uh, welcome everyone to this day 13 of this initiative called Saturdays for Sustainability Learning. And we are connecting with the aim to discuss sustainability issues in a systematic manner for holistic understanding. Because uh, for sustainability, understanding it in a holistic manner is very important. Otherwise, the uh, limited knowledge will cause more problems and it would have more unintended consequences. So that's why understanding it holistic, in a holistic manner is very important. And that's why we are connecting every week in this session. So this discussion forum intends to become a mastermind group. So uh, what is it? So it's a peer-to-peer -peer mentoring group, co-learning, co-creating. So that's what we are doing. And these are two good uh, quotes, uh, which I took uh, from the book of Napoleon Hill. Uh, if you want to know more on it, so I am just sharing on the screen, but we'll not discuss it in more detail today. Uh, but this is the concept of mastermind group. Uh, when a group of individual brains are coordinated and function in harmony, the increased energy created through the alliance becomes available to all the members, to every individual brain of the group. And that's what this initiative is all about. So we want to create this group so that we can take, we can lead the sustainability discussion and uh, for a better understanding of the topics as well. So uh, what are the outcomes? There are four outcomes of this initiative. First is learning one new concept every week. And generally in weekdays, we don't get that much time to learn about uh, these topics. So probably we don't get around two to three hours in a week to learn and to uh, stay updated and the field of sustainability is such a dynamic that you require to learn you require to get updated on the topic so that's why uh, dedicating one hour in a week so that's a really good way to learn and second outcome is networking with fellow professionals third getting career opportunities it may be business it may be entrepreneurial or any job opportunity as well and the fourth is the thought leadership so we want to make sure we understand the sustainability concept in a better way and also we communicate it further as well. So uh, that's these are the four outcomes. How we connect? So every week we connect for around 45 minutes to one hour every Saturday at 7 p.m. So uh, as today's discussion, 23rd September, so we have our topic design for sustainability. Last week also we discussed the same, but last week we majorly discussed on the basics of design for sustainability. And as per our discussion, uh, we will be going through some more details. Uh, there is one book called as Cradle to Cradle. So I'll be sharing some of my learnings of the book. And uh, then we will try to understand it and discuss it. Okay. So uh, I'll just quickly start. Yeah. So I hope uh, the screen is changing for you, right? If you can just quickly confirm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it okay. is. Yeah. Okay, perfect, perfect. So this is a very interesting book. Uh, I had read around four years back. And in uh, uh, last week when we were discussing about this topic, so I thought we should also discuss on this book as well. So, so the name of the book is Cradle to Cradle, Remaking the Way We Make Things. And it, it is uh, written by two writers, Michael Brungard and William McDonough. So uh, these are the leaders uh, in this field uh, called a circular economy in, uh, in, a, in a way the sustainability and the environmental concerns are taken care in the cradle to cradle. So I'll just quickly start with this quote, which is at the first, at the starting of this book, the world will not evolve past its current state of crisis by using the same thinking that created the situation. Uh, can you guess? Whose quote is this? Just a guess if you can. No, no idea. Okay, so I'll just share. Uh, it is a quote from Albert Einstein, uh, who said that if you want to solve any problem, so you need to go beyond the same thinking that created the problem. So uh, that's what we are going to do today. So we will try to understand the problem in the first place, why it is there, how the problem is created, and then we will try to understand what are the solutions. And this entire process should be logical, right? It should not be something that this is a solution, this is a ready-made solution, and please accept it. 
and that will not be right because as we discussed in last week solution is not absolute so we need to take care of the specific situation time and place and accordingly we need to design and devise the sustainability uh, initiatives that's what uh, it will it will make it a sustainable so let's first understand how we have came to the phase that we are right now today so let's go back to let's say 300 years back 400 years back and at that time if we understand business that was mostly agriculture and if there were any crafts so it was individual craftsmen uh, and uh, during this discussion if you want to discuss any of these points please let me know so that we can spend more time on the topic right so first it was only agriculture and individual craftsmen were there uh, the culture of apprenticeship was there so if you want to learn anything so you have to go to that expert you have to do apprenticeship learn from him practical and then uh, you can work but what happened in mid 70s the spinning wheel was uh, developed i would say or invented and we are talking it about industrial revolution so uh, i am not going for the indian systems that we had uh, many thousands years back so this is in perspective of the industrialization and urbanization and the current development that we see uh, in its uh, term right so mid 70s the spinning wheel was invented and which could give one thread at a time and after let's say in 20 years the spinning jenny was introduced and what it did was the number of threads increased from 1 to 8 8 to 16 and more so this development continued and also there is one interesting rule over here uh, so later on from 16 it grew to as much as 80000 threads from a from single machine so uh, this is the kind of industrialization that happened mechanization that happened and there is one popular law called as moore's law uh, if anybody anybody from uh, the group knowing this already moore's law so this is some details about moore's law okay so uh, this is mr moore jordan l moore who was a co-founder of intel and uh, uh, it was his statement which later on became as a Moore's law. So people called his Moore's law. So what he prophesied at that time was his insight was the number of transistors that can be packed into a given unit of space which is double about every two years. Okay. So uh, what he told that after every two years, the number of chips, the number of transistors that can be fit into the same space. So the chips will become smaller and you can have more capacity of the chip or microcontroller so the same rule which can be postulated or which can be understood in different way as the storing capacity increases every let's say two years it doubles every two years in the same way the capacity the energy efficiency of the products they are also improving day by day so this is the moore's law and which states that keep uh, the development or the improvement so that is happening continuously in the same way uh, the mechanization that happened in in a systematic manner and while it was one problem of the manufacturing the second problem was the transportation so first it was the only the selling ships as industrialization and mechanization was just at the start so we were not having internal combustion engines at that time only selling ships were there but later on, steamship came with steam engine, railroad came, and this kind of infrastructure developed, which led to market availability for the manufacturing, right? So uh, there are two concerns, concerns. Only manufacturing is not enough. We need market and we need the required infrastructure to ship that products. So when these kind of infrastructure also got available, the factories and the urbanization expanded. So factories become bigger and bigger to cater the increasing needs and at the same time to make sure that people can come to the factory in an easier way the cities developed urbanization grew and with it 
more jobs, more people, more products, more factories, more businesses, and more markets came with it. So that's how the industrialization and urbanization came in. And what it did to the life of the general people, the cheaper products were available, public transportation, water distribution, sanitation, waste collection, laundry, safe housing. So all these issues came together. So of course, uh, the quality of life improved. But at the same time, uh, there were other issues as well. Okay, So if we talk about the first industrial revolution, so this is one passage from the book. The industrial revolution was not planned, right? But it was not without a motive. At bottom, it was an economic revolution driven by the desire for the acquisition of capital. Industrialists wanted to make products as efficiently as possible and to get the greatest volumes of good to the largest number of people. So that was in their mind. In most industries, this meant shifting from system of manual labor to one of the efficient mechanization. So that is what happened at the initial period. So economic revolution or the industrial revolution that was not planned. It was not any designers or any specific industrialists thought that this kind of industrialization would happen. But this was the uh, background in which it happened, right? So, uh, and if you consider the design goal for the industrial revolution, so for the early industrialists, it was quite specific, limited to the practical, profitable, efficient, and linear. So this was the design goal. So what they wanted to do is, they were very particular about their particular product or process, whatever it was, practical and profitable, making it efficient, and the linear model was there. So we will check, we will uh, see in more detail what was the linear model. But this was all about industrial revolution and later, later on we know that uh, the uh, more production or the kind of development that happened with the help of computers or the artificial intelligence, internet. So these all came later on. But in view of the resources, so at the start, if we even come to, let's say, 100 years past, let's say 1920s, 1910, uh, in that time also, nature itself was perceived as a mother earth who per perpetually regenerative, would absorb all the things and continue to grow. So that was the mindset at that time. Early industries relied on seemingly endless supply of natural capital. So of course, to produce these goods, they require capital, natural capital. So, which includes ore, timber, water, grain, cattle, coal, and land, and and land. So, all these were the raw materials for. Uh, just a minute. There was there is some typo over here for the production systems that made goods for the masses, and they still are today. So, these are the same raw materials that we require in in today's manufacturing as well, right? So, resources remain same, but the approaches that changes. So first is cradle to grave approach, which we called it as a linear approach, linear model. So uh, generally, uh, this is a popular and that's how the name of this book came, cradle to cradle. So generally, if we consider any product, it comes from right from inception phase, where we design the product. And for that product, we require the material, we require the raw materials, right? So that comes for mining, extraction, then transportation. So this is called as cradle and the grave is a concept that where that material holds no useful value. So that's how we throw it. So that's the grave. So generally it's similar to the life cycle of any person, any human being or any living creature for that sake. So generally in linear model, what we consider as we take the product from the cradle from the, uh, let's say mining or extraction. And then at the grave, the value becomes zero. It should not be, but uh, that is that is how the linear model functions. And many times plan obsolescence is there in cradle to grave. So we do, uh, we do not use that product for perpetual. That's not possible, right? But in cradle to cradle approach, this is similar to what we were discussing in circular economy. So in a cradle to cradle approach, the same foundation is there, which is of zero waste. So we do not waste any of the uh, resources that are available. Where in any product, 
there are two kind of resources. One is technical resource and second is biological resource. Also, we call it as a nutrient. So the same principle is there in the cradle to cradle book as well, where he discusses more on practical front how to do it. Right. Also, when we talk about sustainability or design for sustainability, so recycling is one of the major thing that comes to us. Right. And even for circular economy, recycling is the first thing that comes to our mind. But uh, these are some of the important points that we need to discuss. So recycling is not seen in a positive note if we truly understand sustainability. The reasons are here. Okay. So first is recycling is an aspirant. So this is from one book. Uh, the book's name is Use Less Stuff, Environmental Solutions for Who We Really Are. This is a book by William Rajay, 1998 book. Okay, So uh, in which the author says that recycling is an aspirin elevating a rather large collective hangover which is of overconsumption. So it's not the true or the correct solution. And the second is the best way to reduce any environmental impact is not to recycle more but to produce and dispose of less. So again, this concept again takes us to circular economy. So how to design a product in such a way that there is no waste or there is a minimum waste which do not harm the environment. Right. Uh, again, for this topic, I have uh, listed some of the important topics from this book, uh, which is, as you know, Our Common Future, which was the first uh, production from United Nations, I would say. Uh, in which sustainable development was defined at the first time by uh, Brundtland Report. So also it is called as Brundtland Report and in which this uh, very pertinent uh, sentence, pertinent uh, thought comes from this, the, that is industries and industrial operations should be encouraged that are more efficient in terms of resource use that generate less pollution and waste that are based on the use of renewable rather than non-renewable resources and that minimize irreversible adverse impacts on human health and the environment. So this summarizes the entire discussion, so which has been there from 1987, but still somehow we struggled because the means were not there, right? So how exactly, how to exactly implement it. So that's what uh, there in the circular economy or design for sustainability, how to do it, right? And then these are some of the important thoughts uh, that I could gather from this book is first is uh, to eliminate the concept of waste means to design things, products, packaging and system from very beginning on the understanding that waste does not exist. Again, this is circular economy, right? And uh, there is very interesting uh, sentence that I really liked from this book that is don't just reinvent the recipe, rethink the menu. So uh, I really liked it. So thinking out of the box or uh, can we solve this problem entirely? Can we have completely different kind of solution instead of improving the current solution? So that's one possibility which uh, this book gives. And the basis of this sentence is, uh, let me just quickly read this uh, paragraph where, as you can see, I hope it is readable for you also on the screen. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. Uh, the creative use of downcycled materials for new products can be misguided despite good intentions. So generally, what happened, you know, uh, when we consider environment friendly or circular economy or sustainability, uh, we tend to understand. We tend to take it as recycling is the first thing that we should do, right? But uh, generally, that is misguided. The reason being. I'll read it. People may feel that they are making an ecologically sound choice by buying and wearing clothing made of fibers from recycled plastic bottles. But the fibers from plastic bottle contains toxins such as antimony, catalytic residues, ultraviolet stabilizers, plasticizers and antioxidants which were never designed to lie next to human skin. Using downcycled paper as insulation is another current trend. But additional chemicals such as fungicides to prevent mildew must be added to make downcycle paper suitable for insulation, intensifying the problems already caused by it. So uh, this is one particular uh, topic which I wanted to take it for discussion uh, today. So 
this is one and second as you can see in all these cases the agenda to recycle has superseded other design considerations this sentence is really important in all these cases the agenda to recycle has superseded other design considerations just because a material is recycled does not automatically make it ecologically benign especially if it was not designed specifically for recycling blindly adopting superficial environmental approaches without fully understanding their effects can be no better and perhaps even worse than doing nothing so uh, i have been uh, i have been seeing such kind of examples that plastic t-shirts t-shirts are made from plastic and all so i am not really sure about it whether it is uh, it is good for human health or not the reason being uh, currently you take any plastic and even the scientists the plastic scientists or the engineers or the researchers will also not able to identify all the additives which are there so this is one really serious consideration that uh, we should have whether it is environmentally and at the same time whether it is safe for long term use or not and uh, the important sentence from this uh, discussion till now is just because the material is recycled does not automatically make it ecologically benign if it is not designed specifically for recycling and that's why design for sustainability uh, have the prominence the importance right so whatever the system that we are saying it is sustainable or not that should be specifically thought of at the design phase itself so how the end of life would be for that product what kind of materials we are using and in last week as we have created one checklist so we will again go back to that checklist and we will check whether it holds relevance with today's discussion or not but uh, this is what some of the important thoughts are there and then uh, in this book there are five steps for uh, preparing the product uh, for sustainability or cradle to cradle approach so we will see it at the last after our discussion for uh, today's uh, topics but uh, this is what in short this book tells us cradle to cradle and there are some ways uh, how we can do it but today i majorly focus on the problem and what are the different approaches for it uh, now i would like to go for one activity okay and uh, then uh, we will uh, open this session for discussion is it okay so i'll just quickly start the activity and uh, i would request if you can uh, switch on the camera that would be great because uh, if if you can do it that's great but i want your hands to be free okay so uh, your both hands should be free so what you need to do is uh, the activity name is i'll just quickly share on the screen and then we can start because i think you should also know about it so uh, this is an activity called as arms cross and i have taken it from the book and the systems thinker uh, dennis meadows uh, who is my idol as well okay so uh, this is the activity taken from his book uh, the systems thinking playbook for climate change and this is very interesting activity we will see it and then we will try to understand uh, today's topic okay so uh, what i wanted you to do is uh, please free your hands okay so what i'll do i'll just instruct you one one activity okay so what you have to do is you have to fold your arms in such a way okay and then uh, please check which wrist is on top just observe which wrist is on top okay you can lower your arms now i hope you have observed now again uh, second time i would request you please again fold your arms cross your arms second time and please observe which wrist is on top okay okay all right you can relax now so i would ask you how many of you had the same wrist top both the times i had same wrist on the top okay and how many of you were having different wrist on top okay great that's nice so yeah but okay so pravin is also having same wrist okay so generally what happened you know uh, in a group 
almost 99% people have the same rest on top both the times and if i ask you uh, let's say this is a habit right so if i ask you let's uh, let's i'll just quickly uh, discuss with you on this okay so folding a hand is a habit and that's a desirable the reason being uh, it would be a big waste of time if every time we had to think about it so where to put our hands when we are not using it right so that's a habit formation and every one of us does it in a similar way okay so i'll again ask you so how many of you had left wrist up on the top left left hand like i had okay okay i had either right so once left once right okay so yeah that's that's nice that's that's the exception generally very few people have it but uh, it's nice that uh, you are with us yeah so okay left okay right praveen and abarna also had left yeah and how many of right okay so uh, we had very very small group over here but we if we had the sample size of more than let's say 20 30 so definitely uh, generally the group comes okay rajesh ji is having right hand so uh, generally what happened around 50% people are having right or 50% have a left hand so it's not right or wrong right both both are the same uh, these are the habits that we have but what is the learning from this okay so generally everyone folds their hand in the same way okay and if we check it with any group so generally 50 50% are the uh, the probability and 50% pe people do it in this way 50% people do it in the other way and that's absolutely normal but this is something that we need to understand is we create habits because they are effective it it saves our time as long as they are effective we can do it automatically we don't have to think right but sometimes conditions change and in this scenario what we need to do is we need to change our habits if the same kind of habit which are not useful now so this is very important okay so uh, now i would ask you to please cross your arms in another way so let's say if you had left wrist on top now you have to do it with the opposite the right wrist and if you had right at the start you have to do it with left so all right so all can try okay so you need to do the opposite done everybody yeah. okay done okay so i hope everybody could do it yes mm -hmm. yeah so uh, generally uh, this is same with habits so let's understand it was possible for everyone right but it requires some thought initially so uh, though we are habitual for the same wrist so we required some thought we made some initial mistakes and at the start it was uncomfortable for us right i hope you agree with okay i yeah. hope you agree with this three statement three learnings yes yes it was possible it required some thought some initial mistakes were there and initially it was uncomfortable right so this is all about habits that we have okay so now let's try to understand it with our today's discussion okay so over last 250 300 years humanity was made better off through the actions that brought more and more energy under our control okay just a minute yeah so more and more energy under our control we developed an extremely effective set of habits for promoting increased energy use rising food production more and more use of the forest and so forth now circumstances have changed to sustain human welfare we need to reduce our impact on the climate so this is like our next set of activity which are the alternate hand right we need to reduce our use of activities that put more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere we have to change our habits so if we want to change our habits and that's how these kind of habits that we have adopted which is 
more and more use of energy more and more resource use and that's how our life became better and that's what uh, made it easier and stick to our mind that this is the habit which is working for us but if we understand the current scenario our impact have to be reduced on the climate on the resources on the environment and that's <laughs> where we need to think about how to solve it right and one of the prominent way is design for sustainability and uh, here it is discussing the traditional approach that we already discuss uh, in our mind map right in earlier days the natural environment was not considered any significant way in any management the reason being the natural resources were thought to be abundant and that's how the management theory did not traditionally deal with nature and made no mention of managing nature as uh it, it thought to be an unlimited vast which which cannot be harmed but now the conditions have changed and uh, we need to adopt these environment friendly practices and that's why design for sustainability is something where we need to understand which are the habits uh, that we have which are creating the problem right so uh, i would like to ask you all now one activity if you can just list which are the habits that you can identify which are creating to the problem which are contributing towards the problem and we need to change that if you can just share what are the habits if you can identify any any habit should be related uh, to what any habit means so no anything anything so uh, okay so do i need to clarify the question i'll make it uh, uh, one simpler uh, way so i would require i would ask you as uh, we discuss in our activity folding our arms so that was one habit right in a similar terms which are our habits which we are using it in every day uh, whether it can be related to any product any process or whatever it may be right which was working till this time but now it is not working so any habit or any way how we are doing things so it's it's open question uh, yes abarna please yeah so i whenever i go out i carry a big set of tissues with me all the time and mm -hmm. i use them and throw them but uh, i think uh, uh, after the session i understand that recycling is uh, not very effective maybe next time i'll try to take a cloth uh, for mm -hmm. wiping or something i think i should change that habit mm -hmm. uh, right abarna uh, may i ask you one additional question yes yeah so uh, i just wanted to ask so how you got into the habit of carrying the tissue papers uh Uh, uh, it, uh, so I used to travel a lot. So I find mm -hmm. these tissue papers very effective. Like uh, mm -hmm. where I cannot uh, use water to wash and mm -hmm. just right, That's right, right. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aparna. Yeah. Anybody? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> For like my case here, like in Singapore, I recently got mm -hmm. implemented a uh, ban of the plastic bags uh, in the grocery shops. Right. So. Okay. yeah so by, by default we still used to go there without any uh, clothing bags or something right so yeah and then we after go there we realize oh we we don't have now we cannot get the plastic bag anymore mm -hmm. so this is a habit we have to change right means yeah yeah and it becomes already mindset by default before going to grocery shop we never think we just but naturally we walk all the way there and then we realize oh now it's already stop yeah. right yeah absolutely and that's that's the same thing in india also so <laughs> here also we have ban the uh, plastic plastic But bags india they give paper bag right here they don't give paper bag also okay so what is the option there uh, no then you have to pay extra uh -huh. till right now you if you stuck there right they force you to pay extra okay and then they will give you some cloth bag or something like that or how there is an option of cloth bag and still they have option of plastic bag they told because otherwise okay suddenly when they implement this thing right the people mm -hmm. will make lot of noise so mm -hmm. right now since just is a, a very sh short time so they still let you buy but no more free 
ஜெனரலி திஸ் வாஸ் அபிட் ஃபார் அஸ் தட் லெட் சே பாய் எனி பிளேட்ஸ் ஆர் தி யூட்டென்சில்ஸ் தட் ஆர் ஆஃப் பிளாஸ்டிக் ரைட் யூஸ் அண்ட் த்ரோ ஸோ வி ஆர் யூசிங் இட் and we yes, are throwing yes. it right so that's that's in our habit but uh, as you are insisting on biodegradable uh, plates so let's say banana leaf yes, yes. so that's that's nice yeah, yeah. So banana leaf thal leaf cl leaf mm-hmm. uh, plates yeah okay that's wonderful that's wonderful yeah so uh, anybody would like to add anything i'm, uh, I'm yes. not able to Uh, bring up with something uh, especially for environmental like a plastic bag or something but any practice that you are saying you know generally anything uh, yeah yeah anything anything generally yeah so for me you know usually i uh, uh, sleep very late in mm. the day and then uh, wake up late so that's the thing that i want to change to probably sleep uh, well in time and uh, okay. wake up early and give some myself some time for uh, some fitness or exercise because of our current work schedules and uh, being in a global team you know around the clock you have somebody always uh, right. you know there to take care of so mm-hmm. so we have to forcibly do the changes so that's what i feel uh, i need to do the change yeah definitely yeah and uh, yes uh, riyaz you want to share no no dhananjay any any specific okay okay great okay all right so uh, after listening all of you uh, so what i can share is yes definitely uh, your points are really valid at the same time if you check uh, the other resources like uh, like let's say the kind of energy use that we had like electricity use so we have been using it because we know that if we use more electricity so our life would be better and that's what the concept of let's say gdp where it comes that the more expenditure means better life right uh, and how that is correlated the more gdp which is the uh, let's say gross domestic product or how much money that is being spent that is related to the energy use and how energy use relates to quality of life let's say uh, if we are having earlier we only had let's say fan now we have ac we have refrigerator right so uh, that's how the electricity consumption has gone up and that's how we conclude that okay the uh, quality of life has been improved so that is the traditional way of thinking but now the recent studies are showing that it's not the same way the consumeristic approach that owning more and more resources and i guess uh, that's all in our habit so uh, i guess most of us think that more resources will be uh, like it will better our life right so that's that's in our mind uh, that's what the consumeristic uh, more and more resources use that that has been working for us right uh, so that is one way to think of it and if we want to change it and uh, how to do it so that's what the design for sustainability uh, came into picture uh, earlier it was called as eco design in 1980s 1990s and uh, last week we had also discussed two of the reports uh, but today if we want to change any habit which is not working for us uh, let's say even for small things like carrying our uh, cloth bag with us okay i'll repeat one example that we discussed in last week which is of i'll just quickly share the screen and i guess uh, we can discuss more on this topic i hope my screen is visible yeah right okay okay perfect just a minute so i'll just quickly share what we discussed last week okay yeah 
so uh, these are some of the points that we came up in last week so if we want to design any product or any process as a sustainable what we need to do is these are the six points that we came up with first is the value for the customer should be provided at the minimum cost right and this in the blue color you can see we had given the sequence okay so second thing it's it was about the durability the repairability of the product right then the third was the minimum energy we came up to the conclusion that any product which is consuming the minimum energy that would be a sustainable product and that's how the modularity uh, working for function should be there then it should be eco friendly right then the inclusivity the social good should also be considered in that and the last was end of life it should be non toxic for all living creatures uh, the consideration for recycling reusing repurpose uh, remanufacture so all these should be there so in this view if you want to take this discussion ahead so it's it's a brainstorming session now uh, let's say if we are designing any product okay uh, let's say if if it is a uh, what should we take if it's a simple pen right we use it in day to day life right so if we consider the example of pen and we want to design for sustainability so which are the considerations for the pen that we will think of any inputs Maybe can you make uh, avoiding plastic? Okay. Avoid plastic. Run long. Uh, sorry, can you please repeat? It should be uh, used for long time. Okay. Just. Uh, can we call it as durable? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. what else okay low price all right what else if we can make a refillable uh, mode instead of use and throw okay refillable okay all right reusable parts maybe even okay. if and comes to end of cycle maybe there are parts that can be reused perfect all right anything remaining yes using the see. eco friendly ink or something like that okay all right eco friendly and we have one more point which is aesthetic i'll write over here okay so aesthetic or uh, i would give it in low price and aesthetic okay so it's taking care of the customers value so based on my learning from this book cradle to cradle okay so uh, we'll just discuss some of these points so uh, what is there in this book so let's say we are designing a pen so consider uh, so whatever i am discussing it is with three uh, point of view first is sustainability second is circular economy and uh, third is uh, the con i'll explain this so first is if we are designing a pen so first we need to understand uh, what is the value that it delivers right so uh, exact i hope i'm audible that i would say more than low price value for money mm -hmm. right value for money perfect yeah so uh yeah so based on this three integration of these three points so first is we need to understand first that whether uh, what is the value that it is delivering so first is why we are buying we need to ask the question why this particular product is being used what is value that is creating let's say to write right so and why not then uh, why we don't should have let's say a pencil or the other options there are some particular requirements because of which we require pen right 
So these are some requirements that we need to fulfill. That is the value that is being delivered to the customer. And at the same time, we are uh, checking whether it is value for money or not. And that's how the comes low price. So low means how much, right? So if uh, the ingredients, the material that are required, which are having more cost, then the cost of the pen would be increasing and it will not be value for money for that particular customer segment. So first, the consideration is what is the value that uh, customers will be able to buy it, right? So from there, let's understand it. Okay, so if we come back to our this discussion, value for the customers first, right? Then on the second, uh, we are coming to the durability or repairability, right? So how to make it durable, last long, uh, how to make it reusable, right? Refillable. So this will come into one category. And as given in this book, Cradle to Cradle, so any product, let's say if we take the pen also, the pen might have the two kind of ingredients. First is, let's say, technical. Most of the part is technical ingredient. Technical ingredient is something which cannot biodegrade. And second is biodegrade, okay? So in this way, we can categorize it. So biodegradable materials, maybe the ink is such a that it can biodegrade. But for particular pen, most of the content may be a technical material, technical resource, which will not be biodegrade and which will require particular recycling process or recycling method. If that is a technical product, there are some criteria like it should not be toxic during use also, right? The toxic material should not be there. And that's how we will come to the book, uh, which are the five steps that I had discussed at the initial <coughs> point, right? So I'll just take you again to our book, okay? So this is where the five steps approach, which I had kept for this discussion. So in this book, what they've given is, so get free of the known culprits. So this means that, we know that there are particular toxic materials. So we know that these are the culprits. So we should not use it, right? So uh, we should completely eliminate this. Second is follow informed personal preference. And what do I mean by that is, so uh, generally what happened, you know, with respect to environment of sustainability, we don't exactly know what kind of impact this particular product will have. For example, if we take the plastic, right? So if you know, Plastic was introduced to save the environment. I don't know how many of you know it. You might think that it is something opposite. But initially, the plastic came into existence because it was thought that it will replace the paper for which trees were cut. And that's how the plastic is good for environment. And that's why uh, the use of plastic came into existence. But as Everyone can agree that plastic is not good for environment because of the reasons that we know uh, the West that it creates. But second is follow informed personal preferences or whatever the best knowledge we have at that time, right? So it is prefer respect, respect for all living creatures, right? Prefer delight, celebration and fun. So uh, we are not talking here as we are designing for sustainability. So it's not something that we are designing some ugly product for the sake of being environment friendly, it's not there. Whatever is natural, so that's also brings delight and celebration for the people and prefer ecological intelligence. So it should, just like nature, the resources should uh, go to the earth. So that's what uh, the ecological intelligence is, right? Then third is creating a passive positive list. Okay, so there are multiple options. So let's say if we are taking pen as example, for pen, we require multiple uh, metals, right? Multiple plastics. We can see there are different kinds of plastics are used. Grip, there is a different plastic for body, different plastic. The cap is different, right? Uh, uh, the uh, refill that we have, the ink that we have. So there are multiple materials that require and for that different comp compositions are there. X list is something that we need to eliminate. Gray list is something we are not very clear about it. And P list is something which are creating the positive impact. So what are the different options that we can list? Then activate the positive list because this is a reiterating, uh, uh, this is a, uh, what I can say, it's not a linear process, right? We need to go back again for the 
uh, let's say two or three and again we need to check different options so if there are multiple combinations of material how to go ahead with the best possible uh, options and the fifth is the reinvent which talks about uh, the same thing that uh, during our discussion at the initial discussion you need not to reinvent uh, let's say uh, just the recipe just think about reinventing the menu if possible and that's what it uh, defines in value like designing a new transportation infrastructure versus designing a new car instead of focusing on one particular product we should focus more on the value that it generates so how to do that in a better way and with uh, the checklist that we have okay so this is the same checklist that holds true which is uh, if that is a technical product it should not be toxic right so if it is toxic harmful for environment for any living creature we should eliminate it <laughs> and that's how the other factors of our list come into uh, picture like the minimum energy consumption the modularity uh, if there is any product which is let's say which is not functioning properly we should be able to remove it we should be able to replace it design for repairability design for modularity that also comes into it right and uh, that's how this uh, entire process of design for sustainability i guess we can visualize it okay so uh, the session is open for discussion if uh, anybody would like to add any point or anything to discuss please Uh, how do we relate uh, inclusivity here uh, for our example of the pen mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay so just a minute okay so uh, for inclusivity what here we had discussed is let's say we are designing any product so uh, let's say it is it product or any uh, let's say uh, software or anything which respect to let's say artificial intelligence so it should be in a social good for this pen uh, what i can visualize it uh, this pen let's say um, maybe common for left handers right handers maybe uh, uh, yeah yeah that that is one point alert. and at the same time what i was thinking so the pen as a design product that should not create any uh, any divergent viewpoints and at the same time it should not divide the society which is for its good it should not be only usable for particular products as you rightly said left handers or right handers so that should not be there uh, generally for pen it is not there so uh, mm. again we need to ask this so this inclusivity can be included for all products or not See, it all depends on the taste of uh, individuals, right? Some people may like one type of pen. Some people may like another type of pen. So depending on the choice, we can't make one pen which is universal to everybody's taste. Right? So Correct. maybe the shape, color, the technology inside that or whatever, right? So it, it can be... Uh, uh, but you have to have a range of products uh, to cover all type of interests. Uh, that's, I think, and this modularity is a good concept. So yeah. keeping that modularity as your design concept and still make a variety where you are able to meet the varying tastes of uh, different customer base. I think. Yeah, absolutely. And for inclusivity, what comes to my mind is... Uh, there is one very popular issue uh, just recently that if you check uh, the voice commands for uh, different applications, I'll not name them, but it works better with some kind of people. Okay. So it works better with, uh, let's say, male. It works better with people from particular religion or particular region. I'm sorry, from particular region. 
so uh, that's how the inclusivity comes into picture uh, when we are designing for any system but for pen uh, i'm not sure whether uh, will will there be any significance for a product like pen that's one point that left hander mm -hmm. right hander is good but uh, i'm not sure about it what about others viewpoint please today i think the favorite pen mostly is used by either way i think yeah. it is already uh, <laughs> it's it's a universal product see a left hander pen separately versus right hand yeah, yeah. a good example for inclusive product i think yes yeah and uh, uh, yeah so last week we had also checked uh, one one checklist from ibm actually it's designed for sustainability so there they had such kind of checklist available with them so that's how it came into it practice so uh, whether i guess these are inclusivity is one point where we can just check whether it is inclusive with all whether it is creating social good or not and if not how we can address that point it's just like a risk assessment and uh, the how how we can mitigate that risk so can we check any other product uh, with respect to the inclusivity point like voice command that is one any other if you can add <coughs> No, uh, yeah, like from design for sustainability point of view, right? If you are talking mm -hmm. about a, a construction of a new building, mm -hmm. right? So nowadays, if you are talking about design for sustainability and keeping all this inclusivity into the consideration, so nowadays they uh, only not architect and the builders, right? They have to involve all the parties who are uh, part of that uh, construction project. Mm -hmm. Then it becomes success successful design for sustainability. Right. Yeah. yeah, and that's uh, that gives me one more insight. Like, so inclusivity can it come into? Uh, this is an open question for all. So let's say we are designing pen, right? So let's say we are a team of eight people. We are designing a pen. So can inclusivity in design for sustainability mean also the team should be diverse? It yeah. should be inclusive of all kind of inputs instead of having let's say all eight members as a male member we should have diversity inclusivity with respect to let's say female also their uh, people from different cultural backgrounds should be there so that they can put forth their individual uh, requirements and at the same time it is catering and it is ensuring that it is inclusive for all at the design phase itself i think yeah that should be quite valid yes mm -hmm. yes otherwise what will happen so let's say uh, there are people, uh, homogeneous mixture, they are from same, let's say, region, they are from same belief system, everything is, uh, their mindset is, okay, so this is the way and this is how it will work. But ensuring inclusivity, though seemingly the product as a pain, we are not, uh, I'm not finding any particular point as it is not inclusive, right? But maybe the inclusivity part when we are adding it in a design for sustainability so it can be uh, in, in a design phase itself so it's not only about the after manufacturing of that product but while during manufacturing while during inception also if we have such kind of atmosphere then definitely the product will be a better and it will be for social good so that is one way i guess we can look at it Yes, yes. True. Yeah, the, the building example I gave you, right, that is the true case which was shared with me in my yesterday class. What they say, nowadays, considering design for sustainability, if the project is leading with this concept, right, they involve, uh, like, all the way until after building finish, right, the security team, the facility team, everything has to be involved at the first stage of the building design itself. Means they wow. take the inputs from all of them now. Mm -hmm. Right? Because after building constructed, right, the security guys will find a lot of problems, the facility guys find a lot of problems, right? So right. now, during design stage itself, one, they will take the inputs of all of them. Wow, that's that's a wonderful example. It's a systems approach as well. So, yeah, that's that's wonderful. Any any other point, please? Uh, yes, Dhananjay, uh, in the industrial environment, uh, when the project come up, Nowadays, there is a IGBC guidelines, Indian 
green building council uh, mm -hmm. there are different checklist and point and accordingly the project or the industry will be uh, gold rated or platinum rated uh, as per their design aspects that's mm -hmm. also a good point uh, to consider yeah right yeah, so certifications are also there. Like, uh, I guess lead certification is also there for buildings. And as yes, you rightly said, for green buildings also. Yeah, lead is for American standard. In right. India, we have two standards. One is IGBC and second is GRIA. Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, any other point for discussion? Please. which is a subject for next uh, week. We are excited for that. Okay, subject for next week. Uh, maybe what we can do, you can suggest in group so that uh, we can check with others also. I haven't decided yeah. yet, but uh, yeah, you can suggest if there is anything. Yeah, have you discussed on the, this carbon neutral approach and all that uh, in the past? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That could be a good topic because sometimes it could be a myth, right? So we are trying to tell, you know, we are being carbon neutral. Many companies are trying to do, create mm -hmm. all waste and then, you know, put plants and trees, something like that yeah. and say we are neutral, <laughs> right? And then... Yeah. Uh... yeah. So carbon neutral and at the same time, uh, that will also include carbon uh, trading, right? Mm -hmm. yes. That will be invariably a part of it, right? I think so. Okay, all right. I'll definitely check with this topic and I'll also check if we have any expert uh, from this field who can uh, join and who can guide us. So that's that's one possibility. Uh, yes. So, all right. Uh, thank you so much for your inputs. And uh, uh, what is the last thing that I want to add in this session is so as we discuss about habits, so which are our habits as a consumer or our habits as, as a society, as a whole, which are not serving us now, we need to change it. And that's how, which are these, so identification of these things. And then if we want to change it, how we can do it. So that is the uh, today's task, I guess we should all have uh, how to do it. So uh, please think over it. I'll also think and if I get any uh, good insight, I'll share with you uh, next week or in WhatsApp group. Please, uh, you can also share if you have any thoughts on this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and making this uh, interesting discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Nanjay. Thanks, everyone. Thank have a nice day.